You may have heard of fine focus or broad focus on your x-ray tube, but what does it really refer to and what does it mean for you? Well, in short, it's to do with the focal spot size of the x-ray beam and ultimately how sharp or fine your final image is. Now this can get a little complicated, so sit back and let me explain. And stay tuned towards the end where I have some practice questions for you to see if you've really understood the topic. Now it all starts with knowing what goes on in an x-ray tube that is the way the cathode and the anode are set up. By the way, I've made a whole video on the anatomy of the x-ray tube, which covers a lot of what I'd call assumed knowledge for this video. So if you haven't seen that, I'd recommend that one first before this. I'll link that in the description below. Anyway, so what happens when you want to take an x-ray is that the cathode filament heats up and releases a band of electrons electrons through a process called thermionic emission. And this band of electrons goes and collides with the anode, where this interaction causes the x-rays to be produced. And then those x-rays are directed down through the glass envelope and aimed towards the region of interest or ROI. The thickness that hits the anode, aka the incident electron beam, is what's called the actual focal spot, or just the focal spot. And then the thickness of x-rays coming out is what we call the effective focal spot. Kind of like whatever the actual focal spot was, depending on the different factors selected, this is what it ultimately results in. It effectively results in this focal spot size. There are two main factors that affect the focal spot size of an x-ray beam. The first being the angle of the anode, and the second, the cathode filament size, whether we choose the small or the large one. Let's start off with the anode angle. This one's pretty simple. In this first scenario, the cathode filament is the same. Let's say in this case, it's the large filament and there are two different anode angles one like this and the other one with a steeper angle so let's see what happens when we try to generate some x-rays the beam of electron comes in they collide with the anode and will create a band of x-rays where this is the actual focal spot and this is the effective focal spot size okay not too bad that makes sense but now in the bottom scenario the electron comes in and it results in a different effective focal spot size that is the steeper the anode angle the smaller or finer the resultant x-ray beam is now i've exaggerated the the anode angle here in reality it ranges from about 12 to 15 degrees not what looks like the 45 degrees i've drawn here so you get the idea and the anode angle is actually something we can't control or manipulate it's usually set up by the manufacturer so we just have what we have well what about something we can control well that then leads us to talking about the cathode filaments as you may know there are two filaments in the focusing cup at the cathode and we can select either one when taking an x-ray although this decision is largely automated by the system. Let's say this time my anode angle is constant. If I have here in scenario one, the small filament, and in scenario two, the large filament, how would this affect the focal spot size? If I select the small filament, that is the fine focus, when I take the x-ray, the beam of electrons comes towards and collides with the anode, like so, and will create some x-rays, where this is the actual focal spot, and this is the effective focal spot. Now, if instead I selected the large filament, that is the broad focus, then I'd have a larger band of electrons released and coming in contact with the anode, where again, this is the actual focal spot and this is the effective focal spot, both a bit bigger. So you can see just with the geometry of the situation, how the different cathode filaments can affect the focal spot size. Now, there are naturally some advantages and disadvantages, because if it's the case that the fine focus always results in a finer resolution, then why not always choose that one? Well, the small focal spot, because it's focusing the beam of electrons in a smaller surface area on the anode, it causes more heat to be produced and therefore can damage the tube quicker in the long run. So the small filament is only really used for small areas of the body. Extremities basically, like your fingers, hands, elbows, toes, feet, ankle, etc. Now because the heat can damage the anode, there are limitations set in place, where the system won't actually let you select a very large exposure on the fine focus setting. That is an exposure that you'd need for a larger area of the body. You can actually experiment with this one yourself. Select the fine focus setting and see how much you can increase your MAS or MA and second combination. You'll find that it actually maxes out at a certain value. Whereas if you change it to the broad focus setting, you can go far beyond that. And that's the advantage of the broad focus because it doesn't generate as much heat, you can increase the exposure factors a lot more. But again, remember the downside of that is your resolution decreases. And this is because the larger effective focal spot size results in a larger penumbra. What is penumbra? Well, it's basically the degree of unsharpness in your image that's caused by a partial shadow at the edge of the object or anatomy. So if we assume a constant subject to image distance, SID, and an object to image distance, OID, then a smaller focal spot size will result in a smaller penumbra and therefore a higher resolution or finer looking image. Whereas the larger one will result in a bigger penumbra. 
Make sense? All right, so what have we learned? We know the cathode has two filaments, a small and a large. We know the small one, AKA fine focus, is used for smaller areas and results in a better resolution, but at the cost of heat and tube degradation. And by that, I mean the anode surface getting disrupted, which can interfere with the production of X-rays, and that's no good. And then there's a large filament, AKA broad focus, which is typically used for larger areas and reduced heat impact on the anode, but at the cost of some sharpness loss. But you know, if you're imaging someone's abdomen or pelvis, you don't really need a fine resolution because the structures are a lot bigger compared to, for example, if you were trying to find an avulsion fracture in someone's finger. All right, that's it for this very short explainer. If you got any value out of this, I'd really appreciate a like. And if I missed anything or if you want anything else covered, put them in the comment section below. I do read everything. And as promised, here are some practice questions. So pause the video now, give them a go and see if you understood the topic. And I'll put the answers to these in the description below. Now for a better understanding of how this works in the context of all the other components of an x-ray tube, I've made a video on that which you don't want to miss out on, so click here to watch that. Alright, bye for now and stay curious.